What had started in 1963 as a humble beginning with carrying rockets on bullock carts and bicycles to the launch pad has now conquered the moon. Lander maro puri tarah se safely aur softly chandrama ke sutah pe land kar chuka hai. India became the world's first nation to reach the south pole of the moon. India is now on the moon. India's aspirations propelled across the stars and on 23rd August we witnessed a colossal moment of history in the making with Chandrayaan 3 landing safely but let's rewind a bit to where it all began the moon chandrama chandra chand or as we lovingly say our chanda mama has held significant importance since the age of ancient indian astronomy playing a role in navigational aid like the nakshatra system lunar calendars like panchang and hijri religious observances on the days of purnima amavasya and eid resonates its importance which remains strong to this day the moon's influence trickled down to contemporary astronomy and modern planetary studies and with the formation of indian space research organization India humbly commenced its cosmic voyage. Now we're going to take you to southern India where we've just seen pictures of the country launching its first mission responsible for the country's space exploration and satellite development programs. ISRO has now become globally renowned for its cost-effective approach to innovative space technologies. Working closely with NASA and ESA, ISRO has now landed 400 plus satellites for 34 countries like Russia, Israel, Japan, UK, Germany, Brazil and Kazakhstan. Over the years, ISRO continued to help other countries in their space endeavors while relentlessly working on its own missions. Now we cannot deny that India has a number of bigger problems to solve. but india's visionaries decided to deal with them without compromising on dreaming and definitely achieving big in terms of space explorations all they had in mind was that space missions could ultimately contribute to the current and future betterment of society this thoughtful decision was applauded at large but with some exceptions like these more than 700 million indians don't have access to a toilet um Really? Should they really be spending this sort of money on a space program? Who failed to understand the long-term benefits India would harvest? And so began the remarkable journey of Chandrayaan missions. In 2008, Chandrayaan 1 confirmed the presence of water in the form of ice in the shadowed regions of the moon. The ongoing credit debate is still a good fight, but the bigger picture is that we humans did find water on the moon. Building on the success of Chandrayaan 1, ISRO embarked on its next lunar adventure in 2019, Chandrayaan 2. Two Vikram lander experienced challenges during landing and ultimately crashed. It was a crucial learning experience for ISRO and the Indian government. And not just learning, its orbiter conducted remote sensing observations, provided critical scientific data, and worked as a relay satellite. for backup receivers in case of any emergency for one of the most remarkable space missions which kept us on the edge of our seats the chandrayaan 3 starting from the satish dhawan space center our chanda mama was indeed a hot one with the objective of demonstrating safe and soft landing on the moon to deliver the rover for collecting samples and conducting in situ scientific experiments isro developed a three sequence mission for chandrayaan 3 instead of using the costly rockets which took apollo to the moon in just 3 days isro aimed to slingshot chandrayaan 3 towards moon similar to the mangalyaan mission after orbiting 5 times around the earth traveling across the lunar transfer trajectory Chandrayaan-3 spiraled towards the south pole of lunar surface. After separating, the propulsion module kept circling the moon's orbit, relaying communication between lander, rover, and earth. And the lander Vikram inched closer to the surface of the moon while stretching out its four thrusters. It was at this moment when every Indian raised not just their heads with glittery eyes, but their hands towards the skies. reciting their own prayers for the safe landing 
of our beloved Chandrayaan-3. And finally, the whole world witnessed Chandrayaan-3 touching the soil it had been made for, the soil it has worked on and the soil on which it will remain forever. Unless we decide to bring it back or reuse it while setting up our moon stations and lunar colonies? I'm sure you're not surprised. Along with scientific explorations, these lunar missions also strive to figure out the habitability of humans on the lunar soil. And for this, the payloads of Chandrayaan-3 made some groundbreaking discoveries that are set to uncover many unsolved mysteries of the moon. But what were these payloads? The lander Vikram was equipped with four payloads to detect lunar seismic activity, measure thermal properties, density of lunar plasma environment, as well as lunar ranging. On 27th August, ISRO released a temperature variation graph of lunar surface observed by the payload CHAST. Scientists had earlier speculated the temperatures to vary between 20 and 30 degrees, but they were shocked to know it could reach up to 70 degrees centigrade. The initial assessment of the payload RAMBA led to mitigating the noise of lunar plasma in radio wave communication, contributing to enhanced designs for upcoming lunar visitors. At the time of making this video, we could not find the exact achievements of ILSA and LRA. If you know about them, let us know in the comments below. We would love to know them. Moving ahead, on board the rover Prakyan were two payloads that determined the elemental, chemical and mineralogical composition of lunar soil. While on its path, the rover also encountered a huge crater with a diameter of 4 meters. For the first time in history, Lib's payload discovered a permanent presence of sulfur in lunar soil and rocks. An outstanding discovery by the collaboration of outstanding minds at ISRO and IIT Madras. Of course, the lunar surface is not a bed of roses. ISRO faced some connectivity issues, missing out on 2-3 to three days of rover movement, giving them only 11 days. Despite the constraints, the rover was moved for another 300-400 to 400 meters, spanning as much of the lunar surface as possible, before the south pole of the moon entered a long, cold lunar night. Following which, Vikram fell asleep next to Pragyan once the solar power depleted, draining out the batteries. We all hope to see them awaken on September 22nd. The scientists are currently engaged in an endeavor to discover frozen ice on the rims of the craters through these payloads. Having already discovered traces of oxygen, locating any other source of hydrogen would mean the possibility of creating water which could potentially sustain future human habitation on the moon. The discoveries made through all these payloads will forever alter our perception of the cosmos. But the impact is not only on the celestial bodies above, but the prosperity down here as well. Remember when our visionaries equated space missions with long-term societal benefits? Space missions have become catalysts for scientific achievements, technological innovation and economic growth in India. The participation of Indian companies in these ventures have led to a remarkable synergy between public and private sectors. Space missions have provided a multitude of benefits to the Indian economy. To name a few, let's have a look at industries and startups who were a part of Chandrayaan-3, propelling national pride while reaping substantial economic benefits. LNT manufactured and proof-tested critical booster segments and umbilical plates. Hindustan Aeronautics supplied several components to National Aerospace Laboratories. BHL supplied its 100th battery to ISRO, achieving a unique milestone. On the other hand, Godrej Aerospace developed rocket engines and thrusters. And several industries from Kerala, like Keltron Units, Kerala Minerals and Metals, Anand Technologies and Cortis Industries Private Limited, 
supplied many of the components for the mission. The list is too long to be covered, but you do get the point. This is quite close to where the trajectory of space missions, specifically lunar mission, is turning to. Lunar economy. Lunar economy comprises of all general economic activity associated with the production, use and exchange of lunar resources on the moon's surface, in lunar orbit and on Earth. It promises to have far-reaching effects on various aspects of the society, ranging from technological evolution, creation of new industries and markets, high level of public investment, in turn having a positive effect on growth rates of terrestrial industries closely intertwined with political agendas and the complex web of international affairs. Around the globe, nations are racing to establish their lunar presence, driven by a desire for geopolitical influence and scientific excellence. USA's efforts are dedicated to create a sustainable commercial lunar economy Russia's spacecraft, Luna 25, was already in a race with Chandrayaan-3 to reach the moon. And currently, Russia is awaiting Luxembourg's decision to become a part of multilateral agreement for mining in space. While Canada has also signed the US agreement on resource mining of the moon. Past few years have seen a renewed geopolitical interest in lunar exploration with close collaborations among spacefaring nations well reflected in the initiatives to return humans to the moon. By the much anticipated Dear Moon mission by SpaceX, Artemis program of the USA as well as Gaganyaan by India. It wouldn't be surprising if in the near future we can establish a permanent presence on the moon while developing a self-sustaining lunar economy, establishing a market for lunar goods and services. All this while extracting the mysteries of our universe, which is currently encapsulated in the frozen rocks lying untouched and thus preserved for millions of years, soon to be uncovered by India's Chandrayaan-3.